John Lusk here, Lusk Archery Adventures. Serious testing, successful hunting. I've got another bow test for you here today. I'm gonna to be testing the APA Black Mamba 31. You may remember that I tested another APA model last year, and if you missed that, you can check it out here on my channel. But APA, their, uh, their tagline is, we're not the same. And they're not. They have a lot of really unique features, so they're fun for me to test. They consider this Black Mamba 31 one of their finest bows ever because they say it's it's got the, a, an excellent balance of everything that matters the most from the speed to comfort of draw to the size, the weight, the adjustability, the accuracy, and so forth. So I'm going to go through some of the design features and some of the specifications and then I'm going to do some testing on it. The axle to axle on this is 31 and a quarter inches. The brace height is six and three quarter inches while generating a, an IBO speed of 350. Now think about that, to have a brace height of six and three quarter inches and a speed of 350, that's pretty impressive there. Uh, it comes in 40 to 80 pounds in 10 pound increments, draw length uh, from 25 to 31 inches in half inch increments, and the total list weight is 3.8 pounds. And I found that to be fairly, fairly accurate because I've got some extra things on this one. I've got their, uh, their twister rest, and their, uh, their mass transfer module down here, and then a, a weight over here as well. And with all that, it came out at 4.3 pounds. So it is a really light bow, sub four pounds for sure, with, with it all stripped down. And then I'm gonna go through some of the, the features about it here. First of all, it's got their new X1 cams. And they say these are stronger, lighter, and more efficient than their previous model. And they've got their same cam lock technology here, which it means that they have this little pin and you draw it back and you put the pin in there and then you're able to remove the, the strings and cables completely and do all the work that you want on them, even completely replace the strings and the cable without the need of a bow press. That's pretty cool. And then they've got uh, also this, um, this limb stop right here. The limb stop uh, is adjustable, so you have an adjustable back wall, either from really firm or you can make it a little bit looser. It's up to you, but you can adjust it there with the limb stops. Then with their limbs, they've got solid limbs. And as you can see here, they're like really thin and they're solid, okay, one piece limbs. And they're proud of their limbs and that's pretty unique to them because what it does is it allows them to be a slim, efficient, fast, as well as super durable and have a longer life. They even can get custom uh, bows in certain of their models up to 90 or even 100 pounds. The limbs are so durable like that, so strong. And they flex in two different places. They're not just flexing in one place, they flex here as well as they flex here. And that's what generates that extra speed beyond just the cam. Okay, they've also got a, a new Black Mamba riser compared to their previous model. They use this cutout of like the coffin head of a black mamba, okay? It's kind of, you know, something they do uh, just for looks, aesthetic looks, but it's also a, an engineering design that makes this truss super uh, durable, super tough and strong as well. So it has a function to it. They also have an all titanium uh, option that you can replace all the bolts that are in here with titanium bolts to reduce the weight even further and then of course you get uh, you get uh, rust free and then titanium also transmits vibration a little bit differently. Some other specific features are right here you've got this uh, mount that you can put in like a GoPro camera. You can mount a camera in there which is kind of nice that it just comes with that option. And then you've got the fang, as you can see. This fang uh, that looks like two snake fangs really does serve a great purpose. You can just hang the bow anywhere on anything. You're out in the field, you can just hang it on a limb. You can hang it on a fence. You're up in a tree, you can hang it on a tree or at the bow shop. You don't have to, you know, slide the hook inside under the limb with the string. When the, when the, uh, the rack is really crowded with bows, you can just hang it. It is really nice. I wish more bows had that feature right there. And then they've got this, uh, this mass transfer module, okay? There's two places that they can use that. And what that is, is it's kind of functions like, like an extra stabilizer. You can loosen the screw and you can, you can rotate it out. Let me show you here. You can rotate this out to the side 
or this way if you wanted to, I suppose. And you could do the same at the top for just extra adjustability and balance. A lot of times you don't even need to use a rear stabilizer because you have that feature already there. And again, you can do it in two different places. Then they also have this, uh, this weight distribution system down at the bottom. You can add these little disc weights of one to four ounces and there's four different places either side top or bottom that you can you can use those those little weights to help balance it even further okay then they've got um this carrying handle that you know it's kind of unique to the apas a little different than the risers that come in a hoyt but it really does function not only to strengthen the overall riser and make it nice and stiff but it's a great handle for carrying your bow where you don't have to carry it from the string and have your, your long stabilizer or your sight bumping into branches and so forth. You can just kind of keep it tucked out of the way and it really does help on really long hunts and long hikes. Okay, and then they've got two different mounts for the sights, either higher or lower based on where you want your peep sight to be. That's kind of nice. And then they've got, um, for the, the rest, two different screws for mounting the rest. And that's kind of nice just to provide extra stabilization so the rest doesn't move at all. It's gonna be uh, stronger than just having one single screw to mount it there. They've also got this new micro-tune uh, technology and that allows you to micro-adjust the timing of the cams without a press. It's just kind of a final little adjustment to make that little subtle difference, but it's cool that they have that extra in there. Now they've also got some lines that are uh, embedded here in the riser that show you the exact center shot. So your arrow should just line up with that. It helps you to find the perfect center shot every time. And you can just look at your arrow without needing to use a, 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 a T-bar or something like that. And you can just make sure that you've got it all lined up with the center shot there. Now the grip, I, I really like their grip. They've got these little plates there, but the handle itself it's just nice. It's flat, but it's also got a little bit of an angle to it. So I find it really repeatable. It just, it fits really well in your hand. And they've got this groove in the front to rest your fingers. So you can make sure that you're not, you know, torquing the bow in any way just by sliding them consistently in that groove. And here you get a good look at the overall thin profile of it too. Again, just for going through the brush and so forth, that's going to be really nice. Okay, then they've got some other things here in their uh, in this this sling mount. Okay, so right here, or right here, you can just have this permanent sling in there rather than a sling attaching to the front of the stabilizer. It can just go straight in there, which is really nice to do that. You don't have to mess with the stabilizer. Then they've got their their little toolkit that they're famous for here. They've got the G5 carbide sharpeners for your knife or a broadhead. They've got a little knock adjustment wrench right there. And then they've got a broadhead wrench. They used to use a cut out of a maple leaf, but now they change it. They're a little more US friendly there, okay? So they've got a, a different pattern for that, but it has the same function. And of course, like I said earlier, that's where they keep the pin for the cam lock as well. So the, uh, the, the, the finishes that it comes in, 10 different colors, that you can mix and match in all kinds of different ways. I really like this color combination that they have. And then they're, uh, they're coated with like this armor coating to where it absorbs the, the sound as well as reduces the glare. And it just, it feels different. Like it just, it feels substantive. Okay, so now I'm gonna be testing it out. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna test it just for the draw, the back wall, holding on target as best I can without a, a sight and so forth. I'll test the shot and the vibration. I'm gonna take it into the shop and I'll put it through the chronograph and test out the speed. And then I'll also test out the sound. Now with the sound, I don't have a soundproof chamber. So there's gonna be ambient noise there at the shop, but it will give you a relative uh, comparison. I'll test it against another bow in there so you can see how the sound compares. And I always get people asking like, well, is the sound the sound of the shot or the impact of the arrow? But I shoot it at 40 yards. That's why I go into the shop to do it, to make sure that you're getting the sound registering from the shot and not from the impact of the arrow. Okay, so let's see how this bow tests out. Okay, first of all, just the feel. 
The bow feels really good. I mean, it's, it's rare that a bow doesn't feel good in my hand, just to be honest, but this one feels especially good. I love that grip and I love the sleek profile and the really light, sleek overall feel to it. Let's see how it draws. Okay, that's got a good draw to it. Now, it does have a hump at the end, and that's not the easiest drawing 70 pound bow that I've pulled back. You can see where it generates its speed, no doubt about that. It's got a really good back wall. From what I can tell, it holds really well. It's an 80% let off. Okay, and when you let go, it goes, okay? It's not like super pulling away, but it goes when you start to let it down. Let's try the shot. Okay, it has a really nice shot. There is a bit of vibration. I, I counted there and I can get, uh, I can feel the vibration for about three seconds after the shot. Like one, two, three seconds. I can feel a little bit of vibration. But again, this is a pretty bare bow. Okay, you put on a stabilizer, you put on a sight and a quiver and so forth, and I'm sure that's gonna take that out. But just with it being bare has a bit of vibration. Two seventy six. Eighty one point nine. For comparison, I'm going to shoot the PSE Mach one. Eighty two point oh. So, what'd you think of the Black Mamba thirty one? I liked it. You know, I really like APA. They're often overlooked. I wish there was more dealers and distributors in the States because I think more people would, would really come to like this bow, though I know they do have a loyal following as it is. I love all the extra features that it has. Love the sleekness of the design. Love the weight and that feel. And uh, I love the ability to be able to do all the tuning that you need to do, even out in the field without a bow press. And uh, I love the speed that it generates as well. And the draw was much better than I thought it was gonna be. I'd say it's like on par to, uh, to the Matthews V3. It was similar to that. And yet you're generating quite a bit more speed than all those other flagship bows. So you're generating about 10, at least at the draw length that I was shooting at, about 10 feet per second more than, uh, than the other flagship bows. And so, man, what's not to like about this bow? You ought to give APA a look. <laughs>